Uh, this next book review is on the, the Heavens by the World Book Encyclopedia of Science. Uh, this is put out by uh, World Book Incorporated. It's one of many volumes. I, I picked this up even though it's an older uh, encyclopedia. It was put out in 1985, and this is the revised edition of 1986. But this is one of the few, uh, I don't think, world books, uh, yeah, encyclopedias that are specifically focused on interstellar uh, on the, and, uh, science and the cosmos. So. It was unusual for its time, even though it's 1980s information. World Book put out many volumes. It reads, it's just like, I think there's like 14 volumes, so it's pretty thorough. And it's the only encyclopedia I know of. I don't, I don't think there's only, there's a World Book and Britannica are the only two encyclopedias. I think the last World Book was put out back in... Uh, 2005 or 2008, and so there, I don't. I just, I guess, from competition from the internet and stuff and WikiLeaks, they just didn't see a market for it anymore. So if you can get a hold of this uh, encyclopedia, it's the only interstellar encyclopedia. Uh, they're not going to put these in print anymore. I only got one volume, but I think there's like 14 volumes. So if you go to uh, Use bookstore, or you can get it from Amazon.com. You know, it was—it's a pretty—it was pretty thorough for its time. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff that's happened between 1985 and 86 and 2017, as far as you know, some of our flights go and stuff. But those were broken down into just different books, and this is more of a volume stuff that was going on back in the 70s, the Apollo missions, and everything else. So it's pretty thorough. So, I mean, to get all the, the stuff that we've got today, Stodge, you're going to have to buy a lot of different books and stuff, but there's never going to be that thorough of a, a volume that World Book can put out. You know, I was kind of disappointed that World Book's not going to put these out anymore. You know, you know they got WikiLeaks, but WikiLeaks is not volume it's it's for everything so try to and get information in WikiLeaks you gotta have a little bit more problems because it's it's got other stuff in it besides just science and you don't know what all that's been put in there. So but you know this it, it's got some good pictures. There's a radio map of the Milky Way galaxy. There's a lot of Soho data where there's doing a lot of navigation, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, study back in the 80s is going on about radio mapping and stuff and trying to figure out what that extra uh, noise that we were getting from uh, uh, one of our, one of the uh, spe uh, Earth-based uh, telescopes, extraterrestrial noise, they thought it was relevant from the Big Bang and they were doing a lot of study back then on Big Bang studies and trying to figure out what all that radio noise is coming from. So there was a lot going on during that time and it kind of covers you know, your basic astronomy, gives you kind of a history, you know, if you're a history buff in astronomy and you want to see what kind of instruments that Copernicus was using and only an encyclopedia would, you know, give you a thorough background and some of the stuff that they had back then shows you the uh, what they were using the astronomy of instruments looked like back then so if you don't get close to the Smithsonian Institute or don't live close to one of a major museum on space you would lose out on this information and only an encyclopedia would give you that kind of a volume of information I've only got one volume they were was at a library sale. They had all 14 volumes for sale. I only had the money to buy a couple of them. So it was unfortunate that they had the full 14 volumes there. You know, they're all about this size. So you're talking, you know, 
about, about that big as far as uh, the information goes. Uh, kind of gives you some pictures of the, the uh, reflecting telescopes. Shows you some amateur astronomers. I mean, it's not just covering the big time stuff, it covers amateur astronomy and stuff. And only an encyclopedia will pack that much information and coverage a little bit of everything so that it isn't just focused on certain things. You know, it's kind of disappointing that they're not going to put these out anymore. You know, there are some compilation. Uh, research material but it's, it's not the same as having an encyclopedia. It's not as thorough. You know, if you... I saw somebody's sky and telescope collection going back to 1949 in a bookstore. And when you put all the volumes together, you could fill a room from, you know, at least about, I'd say at least 100 feet. I guess he collected each volume that Sky and Telescope put out from the 1950s, and so, you know, it went all the way up to the 1980s, you know, so, in a way, that was also kind of a Britann Britannica, too. Sky and Telescope, I presume, still puts those out, so if you're looking for an uh, encyclopedia, they do put an almanac out once a year as to what was going on during that year, you know, and, but to buy the whole entire book collection since the 1950s, you're going to put up some pretty good bucks because it's a lot of paper. And, uh, but it's still possible to get some pretty good, uh, pretty good information packed in a packed in a uh, book. You got some good information on nebulas, and they were studying. Uh, gas features and how those come together and stuff. There's a lot of that study kind of going on during the 80s in the different types of spiral spiral galaxies we have. You know, all based on observational science, but it was good, uh, good research at the time. Shows also that we discovered that not only are there galaxies out there, but there's also galaxies, there's also galaxy uh, clusters so it's not just uh, it's not just you know the galaxy here a galaxy there there's a combined effect where there's a lot you know there you got four or five galaxies and stuff uh, the Milky Way has a uh, a cluster of galaxies that are associated with this part of the uh, universe that we discovered so we discovered that they're not all evenly distributed out there they were still trying to explain things through Darwin's theory of evolution back then and, and evolution stuff, but those clusters were put out there for a reason. You know, it's not evenly distributed, so it's pretty obvious when you study uh, uh, looking at pictures and stuff that ET is out there. There's a good picture of the sun. You know, they were doing some study, a lot of research and study was going on with the sun. I think Soho was put out there during that time. They were doing a lot of study on sun flares and their frequency and stuff, so there was some, quite a bit of science data coming in about the sun. Coronal holes. Uh, you know, this is just one volume, so you get kind of get a feel for all the information. It talks about it, meteor showers and stuff. You don't get that broad of information when it's not in an encyclopedia format talks about asteroids and impacts and stuff. You know, you're getting a broad field of information stacked into 14 volumes, and you just don't get that kind of coverage except in encyclopedia format. So it's kind of unfortunate that they quit putting these out there. And it's easily accessible when you're doing any kind of research, and you want to look at, you know, it's still valid information, there's just been stuff added on to it 
since the 80s. So, you know, you get a, some few early views of the, Ast the uh, first years of NASA. NASA was just a missile missile range and it wasn't put anybody up there. But it started out during the Robert Goddard years and just a lot of missiles and stuff. It really was not more of a uh, missile firing range than actually a a uh, agency that had the ability to put stuff in outer space, which it eventually became. Picture the Luka, Luna, Lunikod. You know, the Russians were the first ones to create rovers. They put them on the moon. You know, people saw the uh, Kiryovsky rover and stuff. But the Russians were the first ones to actually put those out there in their space agency. So the Lunas and stuff that they put out there uh, were great engineering. Russians put a <coughs> put a lot of good had a lot of good engineering in their space program and stuff. And you know, a lot of this stuff you look at, it's like could. Easily, that could be a Mars rover today's times. I don't know if they would put a lot of changes, but the Russians really haven't been spending a whole lot of sending a whole lot of stuff out there in recent years like that. But they were the first ones to put rovers out. You know, this you kind of question: Well, could they? Uh, would the Russians use that for Mars? You know. Shows a picture of the Soviet era of an era, you know, so you get a kind of pictures of the old, uh, a lot of these movies, a lot of these probes, I was in 1975, I was a, I was a kid then, you know, that was an era of the space agency when I wasn't watching TV or anything or reading, reading books and stuff, so all that kind of passed by, the Viking lander went out. I was just a, you know, a kid back then, and I didn't, you know, have any idea all that was going on. Shows an old Voyager picture of uh, uh, one of Jupiter's satellites. You can get a kind of a historical view of what you know Voyager's uh, photographing capability was. It was pretty good for its times. It's not as polished as what comes out today, but it is pretty good. Well, that ends it for this.